So basically, I am trying to get back into my music and uh, accompany my singing and do it in a way that is not going to stress me, which means at this point in time, I'm leaving out flute and violin. And uh, when I was speaking about the self-exploration and the self-healing with all that, as I go over my memories uh, and my journey with my music, I heal. So the way that I've been healing, and I don't mind sharing this with people, so say you've, I don't know, taken an instrument, say guitar, and I started out and I didn't do so well when I was 16. And of course my reasons why I didn't have the best teacher and I couldn't play the style of music that I wanted to and I didn't have a good instrument, all of that matters. So then you're left with a program in you which says, I can't play guitar or sing, I suck. And you go into another instrument, at least that was the case for me. But the reality is, having a good instrument, having a good teacher, knowing music, understanding and going to the genre you love, just is a completely different, you know, school there. And you just, you can pick up your passion again. So basically it's healing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the old memory that I have, I'm picking up where I left off, but I'm reprogramming it because now after 12 years of music experience, I can of course teach myself guitar, I have the understanding and um, I can just reprogram that old program of I can't play guitar or sing and put on top of it, yes I can, I can do with the guitar and voice what I did on the other instruments. So that's how I do my self-healing. I go back over memories where I didn't do so well and I let myself down and I failed and that was just one example, it could be anything. And I pick it up again and I try again and this time I come back with understanding, knowledge and experience and I do it again and the second time it works because I have something behind me which I didn't have to begin with. And I've done this a lot in my life, um, cleaned up a lot of memories, experiences, um, you know, uh, collected soul fragments. If you're spiritually inclined, you'll understand what that means. So when you're in difficult situations in life, as I was going through court and things, your soul can fragment. And then um, for me, I've had to literally revisit every single one of those memories where I fragmented and reclaim my energy and my soul back. Because if you're familiar with the spiritual term ascension, we're ascending and to ascend, you have to be whole and to be whole, you have to find all the parts of yourself that you've lost and every time you've had a traumatizing situation, anything that's created shock, trauma, distress, PTSD, your soul fragments. It's not something I was particularly familiar with in the past, but I am now since I have been running around collecting soul fragments basically glued myself back together um, and it can be done through I suppose various energy work but you can also do it in a physical sense and I think that's what I'm starting to embody. I've done energy work, I've gone into that and I've realized that I just want to actually live my life a bit more and do it more in the physical. Um, two of my favorite uh, motivational quotes I guess uh, which I use a lot and I'll share them with you that got me through some of the hardest times One of them is you can do it Doesn't matter what you're going through if you're going through a really hard time It's like a mantra like when I was giving birth to my daughter I was always chanting you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It got me through four days of labor and um, That to me is incredible because you're telling yourself you can do it and you're programming yourself and you're doing it The other one is just do it it's a really quick one that I've just applied recently because of my health problems. I've sort of lacked the motivation to get back up and get back into what I actually want to do. And um, no matter you know how, how many times like I've relapsed and relapsed, sometimes you've just got to get up and do it. And for me, it is just programs, mental loops, and to break out of them. Again, energy work has only done so much because you can slip back into old programs. Like if I was sick for six years, it's easy for me to backslide and go back into the sick programs, but not if I build new ones or reactivate old ones. And that's what I'm doing. So chanting something like you can do it has really helped me because I know I can do it. I've done it before. I've done it in the past. What six years when I'm now 38 years old? So, and I don't mind sharing my age. 
I basically can do it, I've done it before and it's one of those things that also gets me up and gets me going and it's not like a force thing it's just a encouragement thing knowing that i can actually do it and just little mantras like that have helped me and i do a lot of other mantras which are more like um indian or hindu based chanting and it really raises my vibration because the more you sort of connect to the higher realms and give like praise to the divine the more he opens doorways for you so spiritually speaking what i'm learning and again, I don't mind sharing this with the community that does understand this. Um, the more you sort of give praise to the divine or to God or what they call worship, whether it's singing, dancing, I'm a Hare Krishna as well. I love to sing and dance and praise God. Um, he opens up doorways and you get blessings and it, it just is just how it works. Like if you ignore the divine or God, he's not going to do anything for you. And then you're going to spend your time blaming and cursing him and going, God doesn't exist because he does nothing for me. Well, actually, you do nothing for him, okay? Because he wants a relationship. It do God does exist. It is an entity or whatever, an energy field I've tapped into. But, you know, it's a relationship he wants. And this thing they say in the Bible that says, you know, um, you put God first, he puts you first. I've struggled with that. I was like, what about my daughter? What about my friends, my family? Whatever it is, there's always something that I want to put before God. And then I realized, and it's the other way around. Everything goes through God. So uh, an example with me, say you have a difficult situation. You could try and headbutt it and try to deal with it head on and whichever way you know how. Or you could just stop and go, well, take it all back to God, go through God. I don't know, it just works. So you sit down and you give it back to God and you pray about it. And I see God as like a, I don't know, it's, it's hard. I see him as a, a parent, I suppose, as a father, but also um, I suppose the one that governs the universe and the universal laws. He won't change the laws or bend the rules, but you know everything through him. So if you're having a difficult time and you take it back to God through prayer, and you pray from your heart and your mind, like you're connecting your heart and mind together. I'm sure you've heard of this when you pray um, and it's sincere. He'll hear your prayer and he'll answer it and he'll answer it in his time, in his own way. But the higher your vibration and the more that it's really heartfelt and genuine and, you know, um, within the universal laws and your heart and mind's connected, he'll hear it and he'll answer it. And uh, basically he'll open up doorways you can't because you as a human in human form you can't possibly do what you want with your life just like that but with God anything's possible and that's what I've been um, testing out recently the power of prayer and uh, perhaps I'll share more on this but you know if you're like if you live your life through prayer um, basically God paves the way he opens up doors you can't and um, it's, it's amazing. You see your life just full of miracles. It was a time in my life years ago where I had an amazing connection to the high realms and I um, was able to uh, experience life on a very different level and I could manifest very quickly, very easily what I wanted. Um, these days, as I mentioned with my illness, I'm trying to get back into what I once had six years ago and back into living my life. And um, just wanting this video to go out to all those musicians who are struggling out there with, I guess, their music and their various difficulties. I want to say, uh, don't give up. And um, it's, it's more about, I would say music is more about self-healing, a journey into the self. And, you know, take it from a place of like why you got started in the first place an exploration and like your love for it it's a passion you know and everyone's got different passions and interests like mine just happens to be music someone could be interested in painting or you know jewelry making or cycling or I don't know a hundred different things gymnastics anything but you know you take your passion and you you, you just make it happen you know uh, and it's important to never lose hope or never give up, but to understand that if these things do happen along your journey and along the way, it has a lot to do with um, your, your mental programs, your mental loops, and you know, not all of them are yours. The world is not 
uh, enlightened. It's getting there, but it's not enlightened. So there are a lot of things that will pull you back down. I think we all know that. And uh, it's great to know that there are tools to uh, erase those. And now I remember what I was going to say. Forgive me for my memory lapses. It will take a while to get my mind as sharp as it used to be. But um, one of the things that I definitely uh, wanted to say is that I've learned spiritually the law of non-reactivity. So in life, when you react to something, a negative situation, you're actually giving away your power and you're letting in those negative energies. So what it looks like spiritually, if you react to someone or something, and you feel heavy emotions and what have you not, uh, a, a live stream is opened up to that person, to that situation, and negative energy starts to pour into your body, and entities and ghosts and God knows what can get in. And the only way to get rid of that, again, is prayer, but also um, through forgiveness. So what I've noticed, because uh, I'm quite like psychic and spiritually inclined is negative situations people hook into you literally they have hooks and cords that go out of your energy body into theirs and so they like to hurt you to drain your energy and it's as far as I understand it's energy theft so if someone's out there and they're trying to hurt you they're hurting you to get your energy they're weak on energy and um, the only way to get rid of that and stop it is not to react but to cut cords and the ways to forgive. If you forgive, again, prayer, meditation, forgiveness, the cord has to be released and the karma is then returned to that person. The, the, the injustice they did to you, whatever they hurt, comes back at them. And I love that about life. It's that people don't understand how forgiveness works and how cording works. They walk around feeling like crap, not realize they have cords hanging out of them from all these other people and situations. But when they forgive and let go, all of it gets released back and the karma goes back. So there is cause and effect and karma. And the other thing I will add, as a spiritual person, I also am um, a Hanoic empath. So one of the things that I find difficult, just from my perspective, is I reflect back to people their wounds. So if anyone's around me, if they've done the work on themselves, absolutely fine. They will not see anything but a reflection of themselves and their light. If someone hasn't done the inner work on themselves, I will reflect back all their pain, all their sorrow, I will bring up all their problems, everything. Which is why I can't live in a share house any longer, I cannot live with other people because unfortunately um, it becomes very, very intense and the people that I tend to live with don't understand what's going on. Now I do. I can see what's going on and this is why I'm able to go into healing modalities but at this stage I'm not because I am focusing on other things but yeah I it, it's difficult to walk around because I'm not really game enough to walk around and you know uh, heal everyone that I meet although that's basically what's been happening I go out that front door I will trigger people their stuff will come up if I spend enough time with them they'll get a healing I don't have the time to walk around like that, um, so I'm sort of focused on what I'm doing, but I do plan to give back in any way I can. The way that I want to give back, uh, as I mentioned earlier, was music therapy. So through my music, I want to write music that is healing. So those who want to tune into my channel will receive a healing and blessings through my music. Um, that's what's been given to me by the divine. and divinely orchestrated but um, I'm not prepared to have my energy drained or zapped and I will just say it publicly I'm not going to put up with BS from people or toxic behavior so anyone who's doing that if I ghost you you know why I am extremely psychic and I will share this too I can hear people's thoughts I know what they're thinking I know what they're feeling doesn't matter whether you're on the other side of the world doesn't matter if I can't see your face I know so given that I am not prepared to interact with people who are not for my highest good and again that is part of ascension you will learn that as you forgive 
people, you're cutting cords, you're moving up in vibration, you do not partake in negative situations or negative vibrations. I will not be playing music that brings me down or others down. I'm not here to hurt anyone and if you see that I am not uh, responding in a way that you would think a normal person would respond, that's because I spend four hours a day meditating. I don't have to react. I don't have to respond. I think very differently. My beliefs enable me to see situations completely different from your average mind. And I've had six years of doing that. So I suppose while I put down my music, I've meditated for six years and I've learned to master my thoughts and emotions. And by no means I'm like brilliant at it, but I have a much better handle on it than I used to six years ago. And um, I understand now energy body and energy work and how energy works. And again, I would say, um, one of the other key things that I love to share from my life experience is um, do not be around toxic or negative people or those who bring you down. I don't care what people think because if they're being negative and toxic and I'm mirroring back their stuff and I'm triggering them, that's on them. If someone wants to throw something at me and they're laughing at me, I really don't give two hoots because I know my abilities, I know God's got my back. I know where I'm going and that, uh, that opinion doesn't matter. That's how I look at the world. There are people's opinions I value, small handful. Uh, again, trusted musicians, people who I know will tell me the truth in a respectful manner. But majority of people, I really don't care. And this channel, it's run primarily for my daughter. So I have a 16 year old daughter and she's also on social media, but I won't go into detail there, but this is done for her so a lot of the kids stuff I'm yeah in dedication to my daughter basically um, maybe the adult channel is more for for me but that's how I've set it up and in future perhaps I'll merge the two together but that's where I'm at and perhaps this has been a very lengthy explanation of everything but I just thought I would explain what I'm doing because there's been a lot of uh, people who don't have a clue what's going on and um, I just wanted to say I'm not your regular musician um, you're not gonna get just regular music here and my soul guides me so whatever my soul chooses to channel through will come through here if I have to do um, uh, channeling um, on any other subject I will as well um, 